Washington Pod presents Earl Nightingale. As human beings, it's difficult, since we tend to take ourselves for granted, to realize that we are greater than our creations, economics, and all other so-called civilized artifacts. We have powers which transcend the things we've created. As I quoted from Manus, if we approach our problems as something economic science can solve, then we shall be behaving exactly the way we've behaved in the past. Economic man is helpless to change as economic man. It takes something more, and that something more can be found in the statement that people are formed by their thoughts, that they become what they think. If this is the case, and it most assuredly is, then the content of our minds, what we occupy our thoughts with, as real, as enduring, as having value, is crucial to the problems which lie before us. Now, while our problems seem to hurt us at the economic level, they did not originate at the economic level. They began with what we have thought about ourselves. If we think of our problems and goals in strictly economic terms, if we permit that kind of thinking to dominate our minds, if we believe that kind of thinking is real and of enduring value, we're limiting ourselves to the level of our own inventions. We're forcing ourselves to become mechanical robots no better than our machines. We've all known people whose lives were strictly limited to economic considerations, and we've been appalled and dismayed by how small they seem to be, how limited their horizons, how curtailed their education. They seem truncated, less than what we expect a human being to become. The secret is to be found in that statement that people are formed by their thoughts. With their habitual thoughts, they shape and form themselves as creatures, as do you and I. And in times such as those we're experiencing, as I write and speak these words, it's good to remember that our eyes, our minds, should be fixed on goals worthy of us as emerging, maturing, growing human beings. We can remember the words of Socrates that success can never be more than a short-term affair unless it's founded on logical truth and moral right. There's so much to be done within the framework of truth and right. Millions are successful today within that framework, and yet may have never thought about or analyzed the real basis of their success. People who live by the numbers become numbers. People who are unaware of the mysterious nature of things, who do not seem to have what we might call a religious or philosophical nature or insight or awareness, probably seldom know the joy of creation. And by that I mean the joy that comes from creating with our minds. We can forget the times, the problems, the difficulties that appear to be everywhere, and by setting our minds on worthwhile goals, transcend the numbers in the mundane we find everywhere about us. The fact is that we don't need to know where what we seek will come from. That's economic thinking. We're above, we're bigger than that. We can pull our goals right out of the mysterium tremendum. The fact that we don't know how the mind works to translate systematically held thoughts into reality shouldn't bother us any more than any of the other mysteries by which we're perpetually surrounded. It's simply the perennial philosophy. It works. I set my mind on something I want very much to bring about. I hold that thought until it permeates my habitual thinking. Somehow that idea becomes a germinating seed, and eventually, sooner or later, and quite often much sooner than we might have believed possible, that thought becomes a reality in my life. I have become what I've thought about. I've achieved that upon which I seriously set my mind. I have extracted something from where before there was nothing but an invisible idea. We can call it magic. We can festoon it with all manner of fancy trappings. We can build temples to the mystery behind it. We can do anything we like except explain it. And if it could be explained, if it could be reduced to dogma, it would become standardized. It would no longer be unique and without duplication. And as we mentioned, little wonder then that the greatest of religious teachers, Buddha and Christ, refused to write anything down. They left such tasks to their less illustrious followers. You know, Buddha is credited with having said, All that we are is the result of what we have thought. All that we are is founded on our thoughts and formed of our thoughts. If a man speaks or acts with an evil thought, pain pursues him as the wheel of the wagon follows the hoof of the ox that draws it. If a man speaks or acts with a pure thought, Happiness pursues him, like his own shadow that never leaves him. What are we trying to build, you and I? We're involved, as human creatures, in organizations. The family is an organization. The company or agency or church or fraternity or profession in which we earn our way in the world is an organization. Our country is an organization. The world is an organization. What is the purpose of an organization? The primary function of any organization 
is to help men and women enjoy a more meaningful existence. That's all there is to it. That's the purpose of our families, our company, our other organization, our country, the entire human enterprise. The primary function of any organization is to help men and women enjoy a more meaningful existence. Is your family conducted toward that end? Is your company? Is our nation? Now Dixon's great quotation takes on new meaning, doesn't it? When you enter the temple of the arts, you enter a building dedicated to the muses, and the soul is there disturbed by a sense of how great and terrible, how strange and beautiful is this universe of ours. Make human life as trivial as you please. There remains a simple, positive, undeniable fact, among other facts, the eating, drinking, walking, and talking, that we're taking part in cosmic affairs of a magnitude beyond all imagination to compass or language to express. All finite things have their roots in the infinite, and if you wish to understand life at all, you cannot tear it out of its context. If you wish to understand life at all.